Hi guys, Darren from Venom Fluid Art. We're Bubbles. Don't forget Bubbles. Never let you. No doubt. Can't get away with it. Alright. We are up to episode four of things you can do with a bloom recipe. Absolutely we are. Absolutely we are. And I've got something today that, because coming up to Christmas. It is. The funds get a lot lower. They do get depleted quite quickly, especially if you've got rug rats. And, you know, your bank accounts start to scream at you, what have you done? Yep. So, what I thought today is, and not only that too, in our um, private Facebook um, group, Paint Pouring by Venom Fluid Art, mm -hmm. we've had a lot of people saying that they are on a budget. Yes. And they're getting very frustrated because they want to create something beautiful. And they think they have to add all this colour. Yeah. So, some are, you know, buying the cheaper tube paints, and that's fine. You can use that. Start off with that. Yeah. But I thought today, what if you could create something that's absolutely beautiful with one colour? Okay. And it's not a tube paint. It's not a pigment. It's a tube paint. I'll actually get the tube paint. The maze of all our stuff in the garage. Mm -hmm. So, what my idea was, because there's a lot of people that are just starting out, haven't got to the stage where they can, you know, afford their, their pigment shed or want to jump into the expense of pigment shed. So I thought, why don't we create something that's pretty friggin' cool with just one tube paint? Now, this tube paint, of course, Bubbles would choose this. This is my Southern Ocean Blue by the Mighty Matisse. So, what I'm doing today is using just this. Nothing else. Apart from the fact it's mixed with house paint as a pouring medium. Absolutely. But, one <coughs> colour only. Yeah. And I'm going to prove to you that you can get something that's freaking cool. And give you a happy dance. Because we all deserve that happy dance, I'm yeah. telling you. So, what I've got is white CA. Yep. Which is Amsterdam. Titanium white. There we go. And I've also got my black CA. Yep. Which is? Amsterdam lamp black. I do love the lamp black. So, that's all we need to do what we're going to do. Now, there's no expensive Australian flow troll in those ones. Nope. They're mixed with paint and water and a tiny drop of Joe Sonia. Yep. So, today we are taking the expense out of it because we all, we all know that once you've practiced for a while, you save up a little bit, you get your more expensive piggies like your piggies, your Pearl X, you know, the list goes on. Yes, you do get far more brilliant, stunning results. Yeah, you do. You just, it's, it's the old saying, guys, you get what you pay for. But in saying that... You can still do it on the cheap. You can get some amazing results with just white CA is what I'm going in for. And I'm just using my Bloom Consistency tube paint. And I'm just going to go like this. And I'm going to start off with just white. All right. So you can see that was just a drizzle next to nothing of our tube paint. That's it. So what we're going to do first, we're just going to go cool little funky swipe. Just like that. So all I did, bit of a weave, roll it around, and then lift it off. Little angle. And we're getting some cracking cells already. So, cool effect, right? One colour. It is one colour. So, all I'm going to do now is we're going to ditch the big one. So that's the only other thing I would advise trying something like this. We've got our cool centerpiece. Now, I'm going to change it up on the outside, so I'm using the small palette knife now. 
and I'm going to change to black. So you can see with that, really nothing tricky about it. But just remember, when you are going to do that swipe, keep that slight little angle on the palette knife, like you can see there, just so I've got it lifted up a bit. And as you roll through, bring it down. Just that way you get your CA from one side to the other. Now, let's load up some magical lamp black, huh? So once again, you can see I've done exactly the same thing, but only on a smaller one. All right, so nothing majorly different, just smaller. So what we're going to do is pick a part here where we think the black is actually going to highlight what we've got there. So we're working for contrast now. And the only thing we've changed is the CA colour. There we go. So, see, that way we're giving a bit of contrast here. Still one colour. So let's load it up again. Yeah. Nope. Bubbles nearly tipped it, not once but twice. Going for the hat trick. Nice job, Bubbles. So I just thought I'd work on my angle here so you can actually see that there's not a great deal of paint going down. And a little bit goes a long way. It's that old theory sometimes less is best so that's all we got now what to do yeah we're gonna go this way There we go. Pretty. So, see how just by using the black CA on the outside highlights the centre. Nice, simple, easy trick. Anyone can have a go at. And nice and cheap. We like that when we're learning, guys. Because what I'll actually do, Wombat, if you will go and get my first bloom for me. Your first bloom? My first bloom. Where was that? So it's just on top of the red toolbox to the left, up the top. On the canvas? Yep. Okay. So, cause, everyone always says to you, geez, you're so good at this, you're doing amazing things. What everyone needs to remember is we all start somewhere. Absolutely we do. So what I'm going to share with you today, guys, <clears throat> and no laughing or I'll never share it again. This is my amazing, my amazing first bloom that looks nothing like a bloom. <laughs> so, see, that is the bubble's first ever triple bloom. Not really seeing many cells or much of anything there, it's are you? It's a lot of mud. It's sort of weaning more towards a... No, I wouldn't even call it a Dutch pool. No. But my point of sharing this today, guys... You start somewhere. You've got to start at the beginning. So, once you start <laughs> at the beginning like I did there, it's your starting point. And I actually encourage you to keep your first piece because that was my that was my gauge if you would you would if that makes sense to you because every time I would attempt the bloom again and believe me attempt the word bloom again is the word I'm going to use it took me a while to get it but I really believe it's a cool idea to keep your very first one because as you go along and you think you're getting you're not getting any better just stop for a minute guys and have a look back at that very first one you do and I'll guarantee you you're going to go damn how cool is this I am getting better 
Absolutely. And the thing <clears> is, <throat> never, never ever compare yourself to anyone else and run that own race. And that will make it a whole lot easier. Because you're not trying to be anyone else. You're just trying to make your own creation. So, there we go. While I've been chatting away. One single colour. That's what we've got from one single colour. Cheap, <coughs> easy, effective. Just darn cool, right? So let's give that a spin. Now, another thing is, see how I've gone so far up the top? Not much down here, so I'm going to drop it down there first. Because if I sit in the middle right now, I'm probably going to lose that all up there towards you guys. So we're going to come down here first. And when you do this, just give it a nice non-bubble spin and make it gentle. Yes. Because Bubbles does like to reef it like a 747. I can't help myself. But for today, for learning purposes, we are cruising. We're cruising, right, Wombat? Apparently so. I'm watching your face like gentle, gentle. Little bit by little bit. You've got this, Bubbles. Don't reef the crap out of it. That's right. It'll move eventually. Absolutely it will. So... Always remember too, if you are going to move it off centre, to move things around. Once you're happy with where you've got it, which I'm pretty happy with that because I like the negative space the way it's sitting. Always recenter it. Okay, so that was the centre with guidance from Wombat because it's Bubbles Unicorn. So now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to spin it. It's reasonably close. Yeah, no, I was watching you a bit. You were going that way and I was going, huh? Now, before I go too far, let's just check we've got none of those pesky bubbles that are going to upset us later. And it's always good to do that before you spin it all the way out. Because <clears throat> sometimes you can be lucky and it'll fill in. Other times, just get your skewer. So, saying that, if I had a white dot right there, just dig it in, spin with your spinner. Then just lift her up, and it will fill back in for you. Nice and easy. Then always give it another spin. That's pretty. And I think we've won, guys. <clears throat> so, as you can see, you do not have to go to a big expense. When you're having hundreds and hundreds of colours. Nope. Not when you're starting out, guys. Don't do it to yourself. It only stresses you out because you start to think, oh, look how much money I'm spending. I'm not getting the results I want yet. So, don't do it. Keep the fun in it. And remember, a little bit can go a long way. Sometimes less is best, especially while you're starting. Because I know I'd rather spend, how much is the Matisse tube paint for this size in Oz? 12 bucks. Say 12 bucks? 12 bucks, our CA, everything else, but that's pretty cool, right? Well, you're looking at, okay, breaking it down. Yep. Your pillow paint is British paint slashing. Yep. So if you're in Australia, you'll get four litres of it for about 70 bucks. Yep. Right. But four litres gets you a lot of painting. Oh, absolutely it does. Okay. A lot of fun. You pour a medium, you're looking at about $70 for um, the sunproof untinted house paint. Yep. Right. That's four litres of colour you can make with that. Um... 12 bucks for the tube paints each. So there's what, 36 bucks? Yep. Bit of water, a bottle of Joe Sonia, it's 20 bucks. But, for say 150, 200 bucks all up. For your setup, yep. Plus a $10 spinner from either eBay, Coles um, or Coles, Woolworths in Australia, yep. Your bargain store, pick yeah. up your cheapie. 
So for 150 to say 200 bucks max, you can quite easily make 50 of those, if not more. Absolutely. So with the paint you've got. So as I said, you know, so many comments in our Facebook page, um, Paint Pouring by Venom Fluid Art. People using so much colour, not getting the results they want yet, getting so upset about the money they've spent. So stop. Yeah. Use one, two, yeah, three colours. Keep the colours down. Yeah. And you can still get some pretty cool effects, I think. Absolutely. Because all we've done is used one colour, but two different colour CAs. So you get a bit of contrast, gives it feature. I love it. And it's nice and elegant, simple. Sometimes less is best. All right, what we'll do is press pause and I'll do one. Absolutely. One colour. Isn't that going to hurt the wombat people? Are you ready for it? One colour? Not a one problem. One colour. Okie dokie. So, we've got an MDF blank. Now, what I do is I buy a sheet of MDF, which costs about $30 here which is 2,400 by 1,200 for the non-metric people. That is uh, four foot by eight foot. And I cut my own circles out. Works out heaps cheaper. You get 72, I think, out of a sheet at eight inches. Yeah. So yes. that works out super cheap if you want to cut your own out. And if you've got two painting in the house. Yeah. Now, pillow paint which I've said is the British Paints Low Sheen. Now, the reason we use house paint for a pillow paint is because it's stretchy. So, if we put a blob of this down, plus you've got to think, if you're buying four litres of it at a time, it's um, a lot more cost-effective than buying a tube paint and mixing it with a pouring medium, which you're going to have to anyway, to extend it. So, that you can rotate around. It's nice and stretchy. It gives a good cushion for if you're doing blooms. Or swipes, or anything like that. All right, we're going to start with that. Usually just run my finger around the edge, add a little bit of paint. I won't bother too much. Now, Bubble said we're only allowed to use one colour, and <laughs> you know what I'm like. Are you cheating? I'm not exactly cheating. Okay. Because. Yeah. Are you going to use my colour though, Southern Ocean Blue? I am going to use your Southern Ocean Blue, which right. is, that's the one that Bubbles used. All right, I'm smiling. But, when you mix up your tube paint with the untinted pouring medium, if you don't add as much tube paint in to the pouring medium, it goes a lighter colour. So it's a two for one deal. So it's a two for. Now. And actually, we can put up on the screen right now too. Yep. Um... I actually got conned into mixing these three colours. You did. I'll put up the video on the screen now of Bubbles mixing up three different shades out of the same tube paint. Yeah. The only difference is she's added some... I had some mica powders. Yeah, interference mica powders, which you can pick up really stickly, really cheap, depending on the brand you use. Absolutely. If you're in Oz, the Pearl X is probably one of the cheaper ones. You can pick them up for like... Five to ten bucks. And just like my first bloom you've seen, everyone has to start somewhere. That's it. So, what we're going to do is use two colours on this one, because I can't stick to the rules. Well, seriously, it's still one colour. Well, it is one colour. It's just a different shade of I'll that one colour. I'll let you get away with that one. Slight technicality there. Now, this has been mixed up for how long, Bowles? This oh, colour here? <laughs> How long would you say? Maybe a month. A month? Possibly. I'd say more like three months because it was off the bottom of the shelf of yours. Oh, okay, yep. I've got to have a mixing things up. Yes. So. <laughs> Oops. He deals with it, people. He deals with it well. 
when you mix your colours up, they're going to last a while if they're in sealed containers. You know, we've painted with things that are a year old. Oh, I've, I've picked a fat skin off the top of one yeah. of my paints and made a bloom. Exactly, so... Mind you, it was one of the trippiest blooms I've ever seen, but the effects were super cool. Absolutely. So what we're going to do is add some of the darker Southern Ocean Blue. Still the same colour, different shade. So it's still only the one tube that you're using. And look, two different colours. How cool is that? You just saved money. And that's what it's about, especially this time of year with Christmas coming. No doubt. Alright, so what I'm going to do is use the white cell activator, which is just Amsterdam paint and water, a little drop of juice on you in it, just to stop it breaking up. What we're going to do is go from halfway, come out, bring it around, and just give it a pattern. And that's the thing too, you just let your palette knife slide across the top, you can work it and glide it and move it and... I sort of suggest people when they're first starting out, just on their pillow, to get their palette knife and just get the feel for it. Yeah. Sliding it across the paint before you put colour down. This one, we're going to use the black. It just gives you a feel for it, doesn't it? It does. Alright, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to start there. Now we'll probably get ghost cells. Where the black cell activator runs through it. Okay, I gotta stop there. And this is what's cool too, because you get to see the effects of the two colours side by side with the black compared to white. Exactly. Very, very cool. Right, now I'm just going to add some little embellishment bits. Now, the magic skewer, if you're in Australia, Woolworths Coles. Yep, which $2, is... $2, $2.50 a packet? Yeah, you get a pack of 50 for like 2 bucks. Works out pretty cheap. And I mean, you can also go to um, like your arts and crafts stores and they have the, um, like the tools you use for gold leafing. Yep. You can use one of those as well if you just want to use the same one. Exactly. Wipe it off, clean it, so it's a one... One use, wipe it off. Yep. But you can tell we get lazy. <laughs> I actually like the fine point because I can put that on the sander and change the angle yeah. of the point if I like to. So. so it's all personal preference, isn't it? It is. It really is. It's like one thing I always say with anything in fluid art. There's, there's really should be no right or wrong. No, there's a million and one different ways you can do things. This is just the way we do things to... Show you how we do it. And you use it just as a guide to find your own thing, which is really cool. No, so all I'm doing is doing a little bit of that. I'm going to give it a bit of a spin first. The cool thing is, if you don't have a spinner, you can just stretch it out. Yeah, walk her around. Just walk it around. Adjust things where you want it. No biggie. The paint that's come off the side, run your finger around the edge. That way when you do spin it on your spinner, if you've got one, it's not going to flick as far across the room. I like that bit. You do? Oh, come on. Now, we've actually got this inside a plastic tub. Oh, and best 10 bucks spent ever. Yep, it's like a $10 under the bed storage container that you can pick up at a local hardware or wherever. Just discard the lid. Yep, get rid of the lid. Actually, you can keep the lid if you want for mixing paint on. and Absolutely. You don't make a mess that way. Reuse for everything. Yeah, but the plastic tub, once it's all messy like this, you leave it a couple of days and you can peel off all this stuff that's here. Like in sheets. See that? It just peels off once it's dry. So you can clean it up and reuse your container every time you use it. Or 
or if you're like me, you'd like to be proud of your mess. Look at it. <laughs> yeah. I created that. <laughs> All right, so I'll just wipe my hands off a little bit. So every now and then I've got to stop one bit <coughs> picking my creations off the side. All right, so... Don't I, honey? Yes. <laughs> so we'll use our $10 spinner. Give that a spin. And you know what? It doesn't have to be any more than 10 bucks. No. This is just a glass lazy Susan, which I'll show you in a minute anyway. The thing is, guys, as long as it spins. Exactly. Now, before I fully spin it out, I just want to add a little bit more feature to it. Oh, I'm loving that. So I just drag my skewer through different places. Like this. This is just showing when negative space works. Negative space is beautiful. Mm-hmm. You don't have to totally cover everything in paint. And realistically, I've used hardly any paint in this. The most thing that I've used is the pillow paint. Like I said, that's why we use pillow paint for all this sort of stuff. It works out a whole heap cheaper than if you were mixing chew paints with a pouring medium, which is going to give you the same effect anyway. It's just not as stretchy as what house paint is. So when you want to stretch things out, your colours don't break up. And that's really important. It really is. Same with your pouring medium. We use the untinted house paint because it does the same thing. It's really stretchy. Plus it gives really good cells. It reacts with your paints, it reacts with all your cell activators really well. But like I said, you don't have money for Australian flow troll, which I know overseas it costs a arm stupid arm and a leg. Mm. You've got to sell a kidney. But Aussie flow troll does work really well. It's definitely worth the money at a later stage when you can afford it. Absolutely, but as for now, look at that. Yeah, and that's just paint and water, untinted house paint and white house paint for a pillow paint and one chew paint and all in paints that i used there which was two one paint two shades yeah come were, from one tube yeah were all mixed at our regular bloom consistency so if you want to learn different techniques but you don't want all different consistencies for doing different techniques, pick the ones that you can actually use the same consistencies for. That'll save you a lot of money in the long run as well. And master those first before moving on. That's it, exactly. The only thing with using paint and water for your cell activator is, when you do stretch it out, it does tend to break up a little bit. No big deal. Not while you're learning. Not while you're learning because, you know, you're just learning. You're using bare minimum to get you through to having a bit of a play and learning different techniques, how paint reacts with each other, how it moves, how it flows. So don't waste big money on that. Yeah, don't waste big bucks when you can do it on the cheap. All right, I think we'll do a flyover of that. Absolutely. I love these cells here. Super cool effects. Yep, really cool. But I like love say, how these are coming in off the side. All the same bloom consistency is what we would use for anything else. The only thing is the Dutch pour is a lot harder because they, all the colours really need to be thin for a Dutch pour. Absolutely. But, but when we get to that, yep. we'll show you one that looks like a Dutch pour but really isn't. But so, you can practice the technique. That's it, you can practice the technique. Then when you get used to that, thin it down, do some Dutch blooms, Dutch pours. But everyone needs a starting point. Exactly. And that's what we're about. All right, guys, if you like that, hit like, share, and subscribe. Ring that notification bell. Thanks, Tinker Girl. That way you get to see all our videos as we release them. If you've got any questions, feel free, drop them in the comments. Or if you're a member of my private Facebook group, which is totally free, Paint Pouring by Venom Fluid Art. Just ask questions in there because we get back to those a lot quicker than we do on the YouTube channel. And all our members there are absolutely beautiful people, really supportive. 
Yep. No ridicule allowed. So it's just a nice, safe space to be. It is. It's definitely a nice, safe space. Amazing. All right, guys. Have fun. Take care. And, and we'll, we'll see, see you in the, the next, next one. one. Bye for now. Have a fantastic day, guys. Thanks for watching.